Emmanuel Baptist Church was planted by Reverend U. Black, being, being led by God one day while he was driving by to Oliver Road, he had the overwhelming idea that this place would have been an ideal location to plant a church. The church was organized in 1989 with 52 church members, many have come and gone. Today we have, today we have approximately 100 members. In the process of in, in the process of acquire in the process of acquiring this property, there was a lot of prayer being made, but on the other hand, there were a lot of delays, but God sees fit sees it fit rather to give this property to Emmanuel Baptist Church. Before we just met under a tent for a while, but we are now blessed blessed by God with this beautiful building. In September 2000, Emmanuel Christian Academy was established as a ministry of Emmanuel Baptist Church with, stu with, student, with 56 students to educate children with a biblical worldview. Today, ECA, Emmanuel Christian Academy, has over 60, 600 students. Praise God for both the church and the school growth. I know as in all of this, the thought came to my mind, why has God blessed us with this seven acre of property? Why has God blessed us with this seven acre of property? Let us pray before I begin. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're the sovereign God. And when you bless us with anything here on earth, you don't just bless us for tomorrow. You bless us to, to be a blessing to you, to bring glory to your name, and also to impact humanity. So Lord, I pray and give you thanks for that. We thank you for the past men and women who have served in this church from it, was, from it has been came in, came into being we thank you for your service and lord we pray that you bless them according to their will and lord i just pray that you use me to speak to say the word of the lord tonight and lord i pray your people will hear directly from you and not from me father i pray that 
he will continue to humble my heart and teach me that way, as the psalmist said, teach me that way, that way I should go it, and may I go it forth. So Lord, I pray that you keep me humble, keep me focused, and keep me focused as Apostle Paul. Thank you for who you are, thank you for your faithfulness, and I ask that you bless your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Between August, between August 21st, 1985, and now on Wednesday, it will be 34 years since Emmanuel Baptist Church has been around. Again, the thought, why has God blessed us with this seven acre of property? I believe that the sovereign God did not bless us with this property by mistake. God had a plan, and we as a church is included in this plan. We as a church, the building is not a church, we the people as a church. God has a plan, and we as the people of God is, was involved and still involved in that plan. The theme for this year conference is Let Us Rise Up and Build. But I have entitled this message as we are just getting started. For some of us, we think that we have received the height of success. And there's a lie in the world that teaches once you're prospering in wealth, means you're prospering in, in, in spiritually or prospering in God. And I want to repeat that. There's a lie in this world that believes that once you're prospering in wealth, means you're prospering in God or prospering spiritually. Brothers and sisters, I'm here tonight, or this evening rather, to say we are just getting started. It is one thing to look good in the eyes of men, but to God, a people full of disobedience. And it doesn't matter how much things you can do for the Lord, if you're not playing according to God's rule, we're just people full of disobedience. Perhaps we might look around and say we are doing well for ourselves. We might say we have come so far we are doing well, well maybe, probably we are doing well materialistically. At the time, because we think that we are doing good financially, we are prospering in all what we are doing, we think that we are doing well. But perhaps to God, we might just be doing well um, financially and materialistically. But, but the question come to me, come to, come to mind, are we doing well spiritually as a body of Christ? That's the big question. Are we doing well spiritually as a body of Christ? Because we can have all, everything this world after after. But yet still, we are not doing well spiritually. And that's what God wants us to focus. You know, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big thing right now where I don't know where this comes from, but this whole thing about mega church, nothing is wrong with a church being bigger or anything, but this mega church thing where you focus on the building size or the texture of the furniture, or the, 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 the equipment that we have. But 2,000 years ago, after Christ went to the cross, the Apostle Paul and these men didn't have what we have today. But yet still we see in the Bible where these men turned the world upside down with the gospel. And I believe that since being blessed with all of these that we have today, we have the privilege to reach the world with the gospel. And Christ, as a sovereign God, as I said, when God blessed us with something, doesn't bless us with something just for tomorrow. He blessed us with something to impact the generation to come. Because when Christ said to give a command, a great commission, go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in all the nation, whatever, whatever. I think God knew the blessing that would come from these technologies that we have today. And at that time, we can have so many things, but yet still we are not utilizing what we have for the glory of God. And I think God wants us as his people, again, to understand that not because we are prospering in wealth or in material, mean we are prospering spiritually as a church body of Christ. And as a church, we should be more concerned to be prospering spiritually. Yes. Amen. You know, having been exposed to other churches in the country areas, I've learned the importance that it doesn't matter what you have. Because I've been to Dallison Baptist Church quite a time and they're doing some work on the road and light go away for the whole church, church service more than once. And, and there's this pressure to think that perhaps if it wasn't in Kingston, most people just say, oh, light gone, so let's go home. But I've seen the faithfulness of these people to carry on the service even when light is out. And God wants us to be faithful. 
It doesn't matter how much beautiful buildings we have. If we are not pleasing God, it does not make any sense we, because we are just pleasing our own self. Believe it or not. If we are not pleasing God as the people of God, then we are just pleasing our own self. And you see over and over in the Bible, if we are a church that is full of the flesh, the Bible says, and those that are in the flesh, in Romans 8 verse 8 says, and those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Psalm 127 and verse 1 said, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it but in vain. If we, are, if we want to accomplish what God wants we to accomplish here on earth, we better learn to stay the course. We better see it fit to please God than to please our own self as a church. And a lot of church today, I'm talking local church because the church is big as we know it. A lot of local church today see it fit to please their own self. Once a church was could identify us, for instance, in the book of Revelation, we see we're a church. Christ said they have left their first love. And it seemed for us as a church. I don't remember the exact name of the church. Oh, the church of Ephesus, rather. They left their first love, and Christ, John was saying that they were doing all of the good things. But their heart was not with God. And that's that's what we are to understand as a people of God that it doesn't matter how we can do so many good things here in this church. If we're not pleasing God, our heart is not where God wants it to be. It might as well we just keep everything and don't give God anything. Because a lot of time we think that we can sacrifice so many things for God. For instance, if you're living a rebellious Christian life and God is saying to you, I need you to do this. But yes, so they can give a hundred thousand dollars in time. Yet so they're not really right. It might as well keep it because the scripture says God is more interested in your obedience than your sacrifices. It doesn't matter who you are, if you're not listening to the word of God, then it might it might as well let you keep your sacrifices. God is not interested in your sacrifices. It doesn't matter again how much beautiful buildings we have. If we are doing our own thing, we are doing it in vain, which means everything will come out to nothing before the Lord. And I, and, and, and I, I can't confirm this is in the Bible, the truth, but I used to think that sometimes God looked down on us as you, and, and, and human beings and just shake his head. And because I think so many times we, we, we think so differently from God. When you're not in the world, you can find your thoughts going contrary to the things of God. And sometimes I just think that God just looked down on us and just shake him and say, what, what are these people doing? <laughs> God wants us to understand that we need to play a part to his role. You know? Because a lot of time, Paul said over and over, the Bible says, and those that are alive should not henceforth live unto themselves, but live unto him that died and was rose again. So therefore, we as a church should not live unto our own self. We shouldn't aim to please our own self. As humans being, we, have, we love to look back. We are like the Israelites, we want to look back. We like to look back on how far we have, we have come or how much we have, we have achieved. But I'm here to say this, we are just getting started. You know, the children of Israel, when God rescued them from the, 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 the land of Egypt and Moses was bringing them as God was leading him to the promised land, they wanted to go back to bondage go out to Egypt and that here in Egypt they couldn't serve God as how God wanted them to serve him and, and that's a picture of sin you know so many times we can look back and say oh I've come so far and yet get complacent you know God wants us to keep going sometimes we think that we can look back and say oh I've accomplished this I've accomplished that but God to God we are just getting started because we still have a long road ahead of us The children, the children of Israel on their way to the promised land, they wanted to sidetrack and stop and look back, but their dwelling place was the promised land. And it's the same for us. Heaven is our dwelling place. Heaven is indeed our dwelling place. And we shouldn't stop until we get to heaven. Don't be like the children of Israel. Even though we can have a tendency to look back, we shouldn't stop until we get to the promised land, which is heaven. And that's what God wants for us. And I believe the promised land is a picture of heaven. And God doesn't want us to stop. God wants us, his people, to press on. Press on. 
and move forward because a lot of time one of the biggest things to kill humanity is pride and we can look back and say I've accomplished this I have done this for example the king in, in the Old Testament King Uzziah the Bible says as he cling to God he prosper but one day his, his, his own heart which is flesh rise up against him and he decided to take over someone else's um, role as, as a king he went into the, the temple to offer a sacrifice and God it wasn't God's will for any king to offer any sacrifice to him it was the priest's job to offer sacrifice and he went into the the, 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 the temple and offer sacrifice unto God and the Bible said God struck him with leprosy and when he died he didn't remember him as that king that done so many great things for the Lord they simply labor him label him as the king with lepro which means a man of sin because leprosy is a sign of sin and when he died, they didn't remember him as the man that done so much things for the Lord. And, and the thought came to me while I was preparing. It doesn't matter how much thing Emmanuel Baptist Church has accomplished. If we allow the worldliness to come in here, and if we have our, allow our own self, which is our own sinful flesh, the old man, because at the time we attribute so many things to the devil, when it can be the, the things that we allow in our own lives. The things that we do secretly in our own lives at home are wherever we blame the devil for so many things for that in the sense when Emmanuel Baptist's name is mentioned among men I'm not talking about people that want to shed bad light but when Emmanuel Baptist church name is mentioned among men is a testimony of the church a good testimony is your testimony individually as a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church bring a good impact? Is our church collectively now as a members shedding a good impact in society? Because so many church out there, and I'm not beating on any church, so many local church out there is known for the pastor to, to be a sex offender I remember last year there was this deacon that he, 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 he got in a fight and he killed someone and, 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 and he was labeled as a man of a murderer is our church will one day because of us looking back saying I have accomplished this and that's when the true defeat comes now when you think that you have accomplished this and you have accomplished that you come this far is our church one day will, will be identified as a church that says a no matter God is with us. Is our church one day will be identified that God is not with us anymore? And that's, these are deep thoughts that we have to have individually, collectively as members. Because I believe nobody became, became a member by a mistake of this church. Because the sovereign God controls everything. Amen. From the point you made a profession of faith, got baptized, and God led to apply for membership. God, it was a mistake. It was not a mistake. God wants us to understand that we as his people need to, to, to shed a positive impact. Because a lot of the time our downfall can be our own self. A lot of the time people don't understand that your own self can be a biggest destruction. And that's why I believe Paul talked about his beat his body under subjection. Keep his body, keep a closer watch of his own life. Because a lot of times you don't realize when you're falling out of line. And God wants us to understand that. But I want you to turn me to Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Verse 13 says, Virgin, I count not myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. You know, Paul is not saying to, to forget all of those things behind. He's not saying that don't appreciate those things are, which are behind. I'm not saying that we should not appreciate what we have accomplished in the Lord, but we have, to, we have to keep moving forward in the Lord. Because Paul says again, I count not myself to have apprehend. 
this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth the things which are before. We can't afford for us as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ to get complacent. God has things that He needs us to accomplish. We need to stop the fighting amongst ourselves. Sometimes, as believers, we can get so wicked with one another. We're forgetting that the battle that Christ put us here as a church to fight is to storm the gates of hell and to rescue, the, rescue mankind from, the, from perishing in the hellfire. And sometimes we can get so caught up warring amongst ourselves. But God wants us as, as, as his people to capture the heart of the Lord, you know? Because at that time, I don't think that we have captured the heart of the Lord. And, and perhaps somebody might say, what's the heart of the Lord? And I believe Jesus quoted right here in Luke, 40, Luke 4 and verse 8, 18 and 19. And this is what Jesus says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, had anointed, is because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to, to, to preach deliverance to the captive, and to the recover, recovering of the sight to the blind. And to set, to set at liberty to them that are bruised. Verse 19 said, to preach acceptance here of the gospel. You know, one of the biggest things that, as I said a few weeks ago, the biggest ministry and the most important ministry of any local church will be the Great Commission. Because Christ put us here on earth to impact humanity. And if we don't impact humanity, not in any way that we want humanity to impact us. We are the ones who should be impacting humanity. Reach them with the gospel. And Paul says it is a gospel. It's the power of God and the salvation unto all men. And we believe that. Sometimes we say we believe that the gospel can change people's life, but yet still we still procrastinate in reading the gospel. We allow our mind to preoccupy with so many things that that doesn't we the importance as a church that Christ gave us a great commission. Christ wants us to have the great commission in our mind. As, I'm, as, as the team says, let us rise up and build. So many churches have started off with Christ being the main thing of their ministry. But today it's far from being that. And just the time for us is to understand that as a church, Emmanuel Baptist Church, personally, we have to keep the main thing the main thing, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'll tell you that we're living in a time where things seem to be getting more worldly than, than ever. And before I got saved, you know, I used to, to respect the idea, idea of the church. But today, being a part of a church, it seems almost to say I respect all oh, the church. I'm not talking sim one single local church. I'm talking the body of Christ here. In all we, we go about to do Christ's job. Because there seems to be like there's no passion for the souls of men. And Paul speaks about that we have to have the passion for the soul of men. But today it seems like we have passion for other things else. You know when I just got saved, one day I was reading my Bible in my room and I think it's the point of the parable about the soul of the sea. You know that verse stands out to me. I remember it on the other top of my head. It's, it's in Mark 4 and verse 19. He says and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches crept in and choke out the world and it become unfruitful. And the same force, we can start off so good, but yet still the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, as the verse put it, crept in and choke out the world. And, and, and as, as a church, collectively and individually, we get unfruitful, which means we are good for nothing at all. And that's what Christ wants us to understand. We need to understand the heart of Christ. So many times we say we understand the heart of Christ, but we don't understand his heart. Christ wants us to, 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 to shed love. It's easy for us to preach. Talking personally, it's easy for, for me to get up and preach a message that is offensive, out of anger. But Christ wants us, as his people, in our circumstances, to show love. Because this is what Christ said, you know, not me. Christ said, in John 13 and verse 34 and 35, he said, By this all men shall know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. And again, even in our own church, sometimes we see like we're not even getting along. And God wants us to, 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 to show love one with another, irrespective of the differences. 
you know, and, and I believe I've convinced myself that as a Jehovah Witness that I hear that I, well, I read it once you're not with them you come out from among them they, they kind of shun you and I believe that cannot be from God God wants us as his people to understand that love is what makes us different from the world I'm not talking about any immorality sex now I'm talking about love where we, we, we identify with Christ because love authenticates who we are it's easy for us to love those who love, don't love us but when we, when we are challenged the real way to show love we fail and God wants us to show love And, and this is a, is, a, is a thing that come to me. God called all believers to serve out of their comfort zone. God called every believer to serve out of their comfort zone. <laughs> and, and when you come out to service to the Lord, it's not where you see it fit to serve God. It's where God sent you to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because a lot of time we can dictate to God where we want to serve. Yeah. Yeah. If God sent you to go along to the Tivoli Gardens, where I think it's, it's, it's very kind to some people right now that we look at the men that are committing these crimes as these monsters. God didn't look at, look, look at us as monsters. What, what, what made us different from these men? Nothing. The Bible said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Nothing makes us different from anybody else in this world. And Christ calls us to serve out of our comfort zone. And I've convinced myself over and over, ministry is not a pretty boy thing or a pretty, boy, pretty girl thing. God calls us to serve out of our comfort zone. And again, it's not where we see it fit to serve, it's where God calls us to serve. Yeah. Because a lot of time we can have in our mind, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. Again, God gives Saul one simple command go and do this, and Saul did the opposite. And he was blaming someone else in his camp. He was the king. And, and, and Samuel said to him, No, it is you, God anointed and put up as a king. God is going to hold us accountable one day. It, they would, you know, you know, my husband withhold me from serving you. My, my, my children withhold me from serving you. God is not interested in that. Hmm. That is why Christ says, any man put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Because ministry is not a play play thing where you commit it today and then tomorrow you want to do your own thing. Yeah. And at that time, I think God wants us to understand that as, it, as, it, as his people, we need to get over our own self. Yes. So many times we get caught up in our own self thinking that this is me. This God have to use me. God don't have to use anybody. As Pastor preached a few weeks ago, God used a crow, black bird, yeah. to, to, to feed Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. God used that, that black bird, simple bird, to, 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 feed, to, feed, to feed Elijah. Yeah. A lot of times we get caught up thinking that ministry is all about us. Ministry is far from about us. We are called to rescue the souls of men. We are called to serve God outside, again, out of our comfort zone. The Apostle Paul knew that God's purpose was not yet fulfilled in his life. And this man could have caught so many things that he had done for the Lord. But Paul's mindset was to keep looking forward. For some people, I used to, to, to sing on the choir. I used to preach this. I used to preach that. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense what he used to do if you're not doing it right now. Because we keep in the memory lane. God is not interested in the memory lane. God is interested in what we are going to do future. Because the kingdom of God is future. This is not the memory lane. We need to get over ourselves as a people of God. And that's what God wants us to understand. You know, I, I, I have this friend. When I just got saved, I get to meet him. A professing believer. And... He said he, one time he had a reason to say that. And he was saying that he used to preach when he was younger and all of these things. And could have preached this, preach that. And until it come to my mind, when I see how I'm living right now, I realize that I was so afraid of, of living in a boxing condition. Because as, as, a, as a friend of mine, he was so caught up in what he used to do for the Lord. And that scared me, you know. That scared me. God wants us as his people to keep moving forward. Amen. And I'm telling you, as his church, it doesn't matter how many things we have. If we're not doing what God wants us to do, we just identify as people full of disobedience. Amen. 
Paul says in verse 14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. And look what Paul has accomplished in his final, final, his final leg of life. And I believe Paul was one of the, one, is one of the greatest missionaries that ever walked this earth. None of us will probably not accomplish what Paul have, have accomplished the Lord. But Paul sees fit and says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Christ Paul, again, was the best missionary to ever walk this earth. And in, in all this, he did not take a credit for it. Look at me into verse. I want to make a very important point. You don't have to turn it back. I want to read the verse. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. And this is what Paul says. This is very profound. He says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than in all. This is this last part of the verse. He says, Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I want to remember that last part. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Paul said, I labor more, ab more abundantly than any other. And he said, yet not I, but the grace of God which was, which, was, which was with me. And what Paul and, 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 and we need to understand, as Paul says, it was the grace of God. Simply, it was the grace of God. None of us deserve to take any credit for God's word. None of us. Paul, everything, twice, if I wrote 13 epistles of the Bible, some said 13, some said 14. I don't want to get into that. That's a debate. I don't want to get into what Paul could have quoted so many missionary journeys, planned so many churches. This one man does so many things for the Lord. But I know that he said, Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. And I believe one of the biggest things that is killing the body of Christ today is men. Simply want to take the glory of God for themselves. It's all about me. Have you ever seen? It's like when a leader died or, or, or a leave a church. It's like a church cannot go on because we have attributed so much, so much thing to that one human being, and it's a work of the Lord. Nothing belongs to none of us. And Paul is just here wants us to understand, as God's people, is that nothing, absolutely nothing belong to none of us. It doesn't matter what souls I can win for the Lord. People identify Billy Graham as the greatest evangelist. But it was all because the grace of God that was with him. Yeah. So many times we can think that we can do so many things for the Lord. I will actually do so many things for this. I have done this. I have done that. You point the fingers. I've accomplished this. I've accomplished that. I've accomplished that. When you come on to God, it's not, nothing, nothing you do. And everything that we're going to achieve of this local church, it will be and only by the grace of God. Amen. And sometimes we don't remember that the Bible says God share his glory with no man. It's like the devil, Lucifer, before he was Lucifer before he get fallen from it. He wanted to push up himself. It's like he wanted to share. God glory. I'm gonna kick him out. Because the same God God is not interested with what we what we what we want to add to his kingdom. Because all the time what we want to add to God's kingdom is not necessary to God. God is telling us to serve in this way and we want to tell God I want to serve in that way. Well simple keep keep what you want to do for the Lord then. Because again, God is not interested in how much thing we can sacrifice for him. You could have given all your money in your bank account. And you're not living an obedient life. Keep it. And that's what God wants us to understand. Simply keep it. Galatians 5 and verse 26 says, Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. I think we're at a place that we are so caught up with what? With wanting to leave a legacy. So many people want to leave a legacy. So many people want to leave a legacy. I'm not saying we are not supposed to leave behind something for the next generation. 
But we must must do so with God filled motives. Because at that time God wants us to examine our motives and see if they are right. You know, as I put it few 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 weeks ago, we can become like children, you know. You go they go to school, see other children with stuff, and they run come home and say, Daddy, I want this, I want, this, I want that. Why they want it? Because they see other children with it. The motives that we have as this church. Do we want to leave behind something for the next generation? Because we want him to, to bring on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or do we want to be looked on by other men that we are, we are prospering successfully, materialistically? Because to the eyes of to the eyes of to the eyes of God, you know, is different perspective than the eyes of man. Sometimes we don't remember that. Oh God sees us. It matter. You know, ten thousand people could have recommended that you're doing a good job, and still to God, you're you're, you're doing full of, a person full of disobedience. And that's what God wants us to understand. You know, I, if I I believe if we continue like this, we are going to affect the whole body of Christ. Not some part, the whole body of Christ. And we can see it more and more. <laughs> I think Jamaica is. I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. I think Jamaica, we're a country, we're, we're full of jokes. You know, because, you'll see why I said that in a moment. If we continue like this, as a people of God, soon and more and more, we're going to breed up more denominational. We have so many denominations today. We have Baptists, we have Pentecostal, we have Apostolic, we have Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventists. We have so many denominations out there and the body of Christ. When, when the church established it, it was one body. Because if you read Ephesians chapter 4, God says one Lord, one body, one spirit. And soon, I believe that if we don't, if we continue like this, as God's people, soon we're going to have so many de- denominational. And if you ask, you ask and say people, you ask, the first thing you ask is, but why you have so much church, different, different church? Because these things are so confusing to people. Yeah. God's plan was for one body. One body, the body of Christ. You know what is what is killing us today in the body of Christ? This unity. A man agree with you, you want him leave. I him him him, him feel him for leave and start him own thing. This is why I believe that we in the church today we still have some ruinous that we need to get rid of. You disagree with a man, you run to start your own thing. You want to leave a legacy. Say, I have accomplished this. And God wants us to understand that if we are going to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish, we need to pray by to God's rules. The team says, let us rise up and build. And this is why I said Jamaica seems to be a country full of joke. You know, there are a lot of churches in Jamaica. We're supposed to have the most churches per square mile. And I believe not in most churches, most the most buildings. That's what I believe. Because everywhere you go, you see so many churches. But yes, they look on our crime rate. So many buildings established that they are doing the work of the Lord. And I'm not excluding us, by the way. So many, so many buildings established. So they're doing the work of the Lord. But look on our crime rate. We can't even bring this under control as a church. And we have to play our part, reach men the gospel. Because if we believe that the gospel changed lives, then probably 15 churches, 15 churches in each, in, a, in a each parish is, would have probably be uh, enough. But when you, you go on this corner, you see a church, probably three churches on one street corner. And yet still the crime rate is still on their foot. And when we see these people that are committing this crime, we turn a blind eye, not wanting to reach them with the gospel. I know, we, you know, who gave us that, 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 you know why <laughs> I said the country can be a, as, 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 a, as a body of Christ in Jamaica, we can be a joke. You know, who gave us that, um, that record? Guineas, a worldly company. So we have, we have the most churches per square mile. And I believe these people are just laughing at us. So we don't know what we're doing. And I believe God wants us to understand that the gospel is what changed man's heart. Not buildings. Because so many times we can build so many buildings. I think, I don't say this is right, but I think the government must just stop 
put a stop to some of these buildings. Too much building we have as a church, and yet still we are not playing our part as a spiritual. If we say we, we are here to, 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 to change people's life, then I think we don't need any more building. What we need is more committed Christians wanting to go out there to reach people with the gospel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Too many buildings. Yeah. We can't even change our own community. Yeah. But yes, we want to build a, com- a building somewhere else. Put on God's name on it. We need to stop building and start going out. That's what I believe God wants us to understand. Because let us rise up and build doesn't mean that we need to build any more building. God, God, what God is interested in, the kingdom of God. Yeah. The kingdom of God is big, you know what we think. It consists of thousands of people across this world. That's what God wants us to understand. Because when we check effectiveness in our country, it is simply not there. And even our own self, we need to get ourselves together. Because so many times we see where the government moves to legalize abortion and so many things that goes against the, the, the scriptures. But yes, still, as a church, or as our own self, I believe the enemy can use that as a way to, to, to stab us in the high when we go to them to say, um, this is going against the teaching of God. I'm not saying we shouldn't go rather. But I'm saying, for instance, we go to um, the government of Jamaica saying that they are going against the teaching of the scripture. And we won't allow it. But yet still, we as ourselves, as a church, can't even control our own self. Look, 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 look how much pastors have gone, gone down because of sexual immorality. And I'm, I'm not saying all of us, and none of us are perfect. But if we can't control our own self, then it seems like, to me, we don't have the right to speak to the government if we can't control our own self as a church. Because the first thing, as you about talk to an unsaved person, the first thing they, they want to do to you, you know, is that, oh, you're a Christian, you're doing that. And the enemy uses these things to stab us. And we don't see that we need to, to as, as, as a people of God, we need to walk as how God wants us to walk. Amen. We need to just stop building so many buildings and start being committed individually and collectively of the church to the, the, the cause of Christ. Yeah. That's what the gospel is here for, you know, not for me to... To, to, to tell God what I want to contribute, what to contribute, God, what God said I must contribute. Yeah. The problem that each person seems like they have, they want to build up their own church building and not the body of Christ. Everyone wants to do their own thing. And that's what seems to be going on in our country today. Every man wants to do their own thing. And that's a worldly mindset. Because God called us to one body. Simply we must work together for the sake of Christ. Yeah. So many times we, 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 we disagree. We run and do our own thing. I don't know what churches we have here today. Well, not churches. How much buildings saying there are churches today. We have in Jamaica. Probably, probably, probably 50,000 or probably more. But yet still we can't contribute to our own country. We need to go out and be committed to, 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 the, to the cause of Christ. We need to impact this community that surrounds us. God bless us with this property for a reason. God did, didn't bless us with it because he think that it, 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 it wasn't there for a cause. Because when I, when, I, when, I, when I went to pastor for just for, so for a brief history of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I could see that a lot of delays but yes, still God still come true. So the fact that God come true for us to have this church here at Two Oliver Road, then simply means we need to do the cause of Christ. Amen. And that's how we keep miss, missing up on you know, we keep missing up on that. Praise God for, for, for Golden Age Home. Praise God for the feeding program. These are the cause of Christ. God wants us to be more passion, passionable about the things of Him. Sometimes we will find ourselves being passionate for the things of the world, or passionate for the things of the world. God doesn't want us to be passionate about that. Because all over and over we talk about we are pilgrims, but yet say we don't be like a pilgrim. A pilgrim is not. It's like Abraham. God say you must move. Well, let me tell you this more relatable term. The pilgrims are supposed to be like the children of Israel. The promised land was their final destination. And every minute God said to them, get up, move. Because God did not want them to have any dwelling place there. Because God knew that once they're going to settle there, they're going to get complacent and then sin is going to come. God wants us as his people to keep moving forward. 
keep moving forward. The scripture use the phrase kingdom of God for a reason. And sometimes we think the kingdom of God is consists of small, small amount of people. The kingdom of God is consists of thousands of people that have placed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are called to one body, so therefore we are called to build up the kingdom of God. The church is not about no person. No person. The church is not about no person. It is not about no, 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 no particular a group of pastors. It is not about a particular group of people or your deacons. This church is simply about the Lord Jesus Christ. It is simple about Christ and the work of Christ. The Great Commission is that simple. And if any church dare to be doing so many things but yet not still doing the work of the Lord, then that church needs to be closed. I believe that with all my heart. Because what, what's the sense being established as a church to reach a loss but yet still you're doing your own thing? And I believe that if we reach to a point that we're doing our own thing, then simply mean we just need to close. Close down. Matthew 6, Matthew 16 and verse 18 says, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. From ever since the church came into existence, it was simple about Christ. And today, it's supposed to, simple, it's supposed to be simple about Christ. But today, it seems like it's more about the pastors than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, in so many churches, they, they make it look like the pastor is this I.O. person. Some people, if, I want to say this tonight, it's the church is not about a person that preached behind the pulpit. It's the church is about somebody that went to the Calvary Cross and purchased the church with his blood. So many times we, 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 we act like everything that anybody says that calls himself a pastor is gospel. The church is not about a man that preached behind the pulpit. The church is about a man that went to the cross. God said to Peter, up on this rock, I will build my church. It's God's church. Yeah. Amen. But sad to say today, it's like every man wants to build their own kingdom. Again, most men want to leave a legacy. I want to leave something with my name on it. It's that simple. Most men want to leave something with their name on it. Again, I think we need to ask God to help, help us get over our own self. Because the people of God, we need to understand the church is not about us. It's about Christ and his work. Sometimes people want to stop God's work because they are not a part of it. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about the cause of Christ. And I want to say this tonight. As we are building, don't build apart from God. And don't build apart, apart from the kingdom of God. Don't build without God. Because we can't build without God. We need to serve the Lord. We need to, to understand what God wants us to understand as his people. Don't build without God. Don't build apart from the kingdom of God. And this, one, this thing about every man wanting to do their own thing is going to lead more, more and more men to destruction. Verse 15 says, Let us therefore, as many as being perfect, be thus minded, and if anything it be otherwise minded, God shall re reveal this even this unto you. For some of us, we think that we have figured out who God is. <laughs> For some of us, we think that we, we understand God totally. We can reach a place where, oh, remember the, the, the towel of Babel, Babel, I remember Babel, Babel in, in Genesis. These people wanted to build a tower to heaven because these people think that they, 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 they understand who God is. But I'm here to say this tonight. No amount of theology our studies can um, exhaust who God is. 
Some time we think about figure God out, you know. We can't never figure God out. No amount of theology can tell you who God is. We will continue to learn new things about God up until we take our last breath. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we need to understand. And I think that will keep us going is that we can't fully exhaust the word of God. Yeah. Some church believe that, oh, I preach from cover to cover, so away with this book. Let's get to be some motivational speakers. That when they stand up, you don't even see them with the Bible today. It's almost like, okay, I want to speak from my own intellectual intelligence. The Bible said the wisdom of this word is foolish unto God. Believe it or not. That's what Paul wants us to understand. The wisdom, the wisdom of this world is foolishness. The wisdom of men is foolishness unto God. That's what God wants us to understand. No amount of what we can think about can outsmart who God is. I think sometimes we need to understand that God doesn't need us. Believe it or not. God is not afraid to put us, put us one side. But yes, God doesn't reject us. We can't fully conceive who God is. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, put it like this. For my thoughts, which is God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your, th- your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The only, the only way to understand who God is, it is to remain humble. A humble heart is, is far better than a proud heart. You know why? The Bible simply put it like this. God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. We can't fully exhaust who God is. God wants us to remain faithful as his church. Remain humble. And anybody that is being studied in the Bible... We'll probably be tempted sometimes to think that, oh, I know all that, I know this, I know that. But to God, you don't know nothing. God wants us to remain humble, stay faithful, keep moving forward. As I said earlier, we have just getting started and we need to keep moving forward. Don't get complacent because complacent is where sin crept in. Because at that time when you get complacent, in Hebrews it says, look unto art, the art the the finisher. The, the start, the, the, look onto the, look onto G, the, the altar and the finish of your faith. Yeah. The finish of being the perfect and the person who started. Christ started faith and he will, he will one day will come and perfect the faith, finalize on your faith. Yeah. Sometimes we think as a church that we have reached so far that we take our eyes off Jesus mm. and start focusing on other things. So many churches today is, 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 is so involved in this social gathering and the gospel is outside of the, the whole thing. The gospel should be the most important thing in the church of anything you're keeping. There's a lie that says because we are growing in the knowledge of God means that we are growing spiritually. But I'm here to say this. We can be growing, growing in knowledge but yet still not growing in obedience to the word of God. We can be growing in knowledge of God yet still and not growing in obedience to the word of God. Amen. You, have, you have so many people on the road and I go to witness. They are so religious. They can probably quote the whole Bible. But if you ask them they are saved, they are not saved. What's the point of knowing this if you are not saved? And this is why James says, Be not hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Because God is not interested in what you know. You know if you are not living it out. Because God is going to judge us based on what we know about him one day. As a church, this is this is what this is what I want to understand. We can operate in a, 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 in the sense where the world is is operating now. We can get to this place where everything is instant. I, I remember once I was um, looking on something a coffee, and you have this thing instant coffee. I believe in our world where everything is just instant. You want something, get it, get it, get it, get it. And as a people of God, as we keep moving forward, one thing we need to do is serve the Lord. Seek the Lord for advice. Don't run ahead and start anything without seeking the Lord. A proud heart is like this. We use God to a point, and when we think we can take over, we take over and just keep God on the side. 
And when we need him, we just consult him. It's like we're cheating like a genie. I think sometimes we need to think. I think sometimes we think that we can take God for fool, you know. Sometimes we think that we can use him. Yeah. All of us, we, we think we can use God at times. And we need to understand that God is not a fool. The Bible said God is not God will not be mad. But so a man so that he will also read. God is not a joke. I think so many times we can just run ahead and start and do our own thing. But in doing it, we realize that God never gave us the go ahead to do this or to carry out that. God wants us to, 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 to seek Him before we do anything. Don't be like any other church or even individually. Run ahead and start something and then you want to ask God blessing upon Him. That's what, that, that's what a lot of people do, you know. This is what faith looks like to other people. They run ahead. Oh, I do represent itself. Let me take that, take that opportunity. That's not faith. That's disobedience. Faith is like when God said to Abraham, Go and I will provide for you. And that's what God, that's what Abraham did, you know. The Bible said, Go to a city. And when, when Abraham stepped out, he did not know that what God is going to do in that land. But yet, said God provide for him in that land. That's what faith is. You don't run ahead and start something and then you ask God to bless you upon it. That's right. disobedient. Yeah. Faith is basically when God says you need to serve him, you go out according to his will mm -hmm. and then God will provide, confirm, confirm to you that he called you to do this. Right. At other time we can run ahead, start things and then we ask God to bless you upon something. Mm -hmm. And if some, some people, I believe, consult God before they get into a relationship, it really, that the relationship would have been saved. It would have been a disaster. God wants us to seek Him all the way. Don't run ahead and start anything and you want to ask God blessing upon it. Because first thing, God never gave you the go ahead on it. God wants us to seek Him. And anything we want to do at this church, we need to seek the Lord. Don't run ahead and start anything and then we ask God blessing upon it. We be patient. That's what God is all about. Verse 16 says, Nevertheless, we are until we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. The Apostle Paul knew the importance of staying the course. None of us have never yet, maybe, will accomplish what the Apostle Paul have accomplished for the Lord. You know, sometimes people say to me that, Wilton, you know you're growing, right? You know you're growing, you're growing, you're growing in the Lord. And I have to remind myself, don't get tired of myself, stay the course. Because compliment can lead you off track. We need to understand that you need to stay the course. And all the time I have to remind myself that God has not yet started with me as yet. God has not yet started with me. Because all the time, when people tell me that you're growing, man, yes, it's a good thing to hear that, yes. But at that time, I have to remind myself personally that I need to stay the course. Because so many men start off good. It's like a 100 meter race. <laughs> Gatlin always seems to have the, the best start. And then bowl past him. <laughs> you know, we need to understand that this, right, this Christian race is not a, a quick sprint. It's a marathon. Right. And the only way we want to endure that is to cling to the Lord and stay in the course. God will enable us to, to run on that marathon. It's not a sprint where you start off quick and then down the road you, you break down. God wants us to stay the course, be and play a part into God's role. If we want to finish well at this church, both collectively and individually, God wants us to stay the course. Don't tell yourself that I have reached far. Stay the course. Always remind yourself you are just getting started. It doesn't matter how old you are tonight. You are just getting started for the glory of God. Because at the time we want to look back and I've accomplished this and, and father of child. All that we have to accomplish, it, all that we have accomplished rather, it was by the grace of God. And if we are going to move forward, 
I pray to God that we see the importance of clinging to God. Not just clinging to Him sometimes, clinging to Him all the time. Because once we're outside of the will of God, that means danger. We are, we are susceptible to, 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 to prone to do so many foolishness once we are outside of the will of God. That's why we need to steer the course, cling to God. Verse 17 says, Virgin, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have, ye have us for an example. Ensample, rather. Our church name is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Our motto is God in us, with us, and through us. That matter might sound good to other people. God in us, with us, and through us. I pray to that, I pray to God, that one day that matter don't change. Because sometimes we start out with some foundational stuff, and then we, in, in the middle I think, okay, this is not relevant anymore. Because the society is changing, meaning that we are ready to change. That's what some people Christian think. But I believe as Christians, the Bible said in Hebrews, God is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And if God doesn't change, and we, the teaching of the scripture, and, and what we stand for shouldn't change, even society change. We're not, cheap, we're not supposed to change to compromise, accept anyone. Right. So many times we change, because we want to be relevant. That's what the society teaches, want to be relevant. I pray to God that one day that matter don't change, that God be without us. I pray that God stay within us. That's what the word Emmanuel means. God with us. I know this is a very important verse. Sometimes we use it for salvation. I don't think it's supposed to be used for salvation because the context of this verse in Revelation chapter 3, the church of Laodicea, the lukewarm church, I pray that we don't become like that church. And here's this verse, very popular verse, Re Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 says, Jesus himself, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and soap him up, and he will be with me. Soap, soap him up. Soap with him, and he will be with me. Sorry, rather. Christ was knocking to come in, and I pray that one day we don't put out Christ by doing our own thing. Keep Christ in the midst of everything that you're doing. If we're going to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish, we need to keep Christ in, every, in everything that we're doing. Because Christ was knocking to this lukewarm church, I need to come in. Because these persons have put out Christ by doing their own thing. God doesn't want us to do that. Again, we live in a culture that people know want what the Bible, Bible says as truth to change it, to, to fix them. We live in a culture. This thing about relativism, everybody dictate what truth is to them. And I think that in the church, truth is always according to the teaching of the scripture. And sometimes we change truth to, 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 to satisfy how we want to live. But my conviction says this. But my conviction says that. And so before long, we take grace as a way of just living how we want to live. God wants us to understand that grace is something that has enabled us to carry on, to grow, to conform with the image of His Son. That's what grace is for. You know, the last verse of Judges. I want to quote the last part of the word, the, the verse. It says, And every man do what was right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. And we live in our culture, even this world, this fallen world, that every man seems to be doing what is right in their own eyes. But one day I believe God is going to burst the crowd and caught most of us unaware. And all of us will give account to God individually and collectively as a church. Because when Christ comes to redeem, his, redeem the bride, I will stand before the, the judgment seat of Christ. That, if, that is if, if we are saved. We will have to give account for every single thing that we have done since we received the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Don't be like that, that last verse in Judges that says, Every man do what was right in their own eyes. And there's this parable that speaks about the main servant went away to do some other things, to take care of some other business, and come back and ask the man, Where, what did you do with the talents that I have messed you with? And he said, He did it. And God said, Do a wicked and wicked, wicked servant. You know what Jesus said to the rest of the servants that did what he what, did, did what he commanded them to do. He said, Well done, though, good and faithful servant. Do we want to hear it as God's people? We need to understand that God wants us to, 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 to reach the world with the gospel. And again, we need to serve God. You know, God calls us to serve and not all we want to serve. And that's what mashing up. Most churches today, most people want to dictate out to God all they want to serve. Creating problems in, in other areas that they're not supposed to be in. We need to listen to the voice of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to God leading. Listen to Him. You know, the church was first established to bring praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, reach the loss with the gospel. And third, after means, reach the loss. As we are Christian, we are supposed to be challenged to be more like Christ. And lastly, to build up others. But this thing, this fifth one, I don't know where it comes from. This has become a big part of the church today. And how it has even surpassed everything that I have listed before. Again, I want to repeat it. The church was first established to bring praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Reach the last of the gospel. Challenge us as Christians to be more like Christ. And last, to build up others after we become Christians. Because this Christian journey is not easy. And this last one has become so big part of the church today. Entertainment. Most people don't go to church anymore because it's not entertaining. When did the church become a circus? <laughs> God wants us to understand that the church was here for its purpose. Sometimes we don't go to church because it's not entertaining us. The church is not supposed to be entertaining. The church is supposed to challenge us to be more like Christ. Yeah. Any church that you're going to make you feel good, that can be the things of God. God didn't establish the church to be entertaining because we're no clowns. I think we reach a place where entertainment for, for most churches, even the praise and worship, I'm not saying it's not important, because service is important, but praise and worship seem to be more important to some people than even hearing a sermon. That's also challenging them to be more like Christ. God wants us to keep the main thing, the main thing. And the devil use entertainment to lower, lower some of us outside to do what they want us to do. Look on some of these churches today, you see so many bright lights. It's like it's almost it's like it's like it's almost a world stage show. God wants us to understand that this thing about entertainment is foolishness. God calls us to, to, to reach the loss. Focus on him. Again, I don't want to say praise and worship service importance. But when you reach a place where you, you just want to hear songs, I don't want to hear a sermon, you need to check yourself. Because sermons is what challenges people to be more like Christ. I pray to God, as I am closing, I pray to God that every time we think that we have reached the height of success as a church, I pray that we remember that we are just getting started. We need to stay the course. As, I, as, as Tuesday, as I'm... I'm assigned to speak Tuesday and Tuesday night I will get into the whole aspect of crying out what God cries us to do to stay the course because we need to understand that God calls us to arm ourselves to reach the lost that's what we're talking about Tuesday night so let us pray Father we thank you for who you are we thank you for your truths we thank you that you're a sovereign God and that this theme about let us rise up and build let us not be so isolated, wanting to do our own thing. But to do what you want us to do. We were, we were saved to cry out the master plan, which is you, the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, I pray that we surrender to you, to be used by you. And as I thought that you did in my heart, over and over, let every believer learn to serve all you want us to be served, Lord, and not all we want to serve. 
because we need to understand as your people that your grace is free but one day your rewards won't be free so Lord help us to remind us, remember that and help us to keep faithful irrespectful of the challenges and I pray for enablement for anyone here that want to surrender to be used by you in any area I pray that they surrender to you completely maybe you're calling someone to do missions work or even to, to get themselves equipped as far as announce the evangelism force these are things that need to be pushed forth because Lord you're faithful and you want men to be safe even when you're wicked because Paul was a wretched sinner including myself but Lord you saved us and you're using us for your glory I pray that anyone here that want to surrender to be used by you I pray that you empower them give it with their spirit to be bold for you at your workplace at your home and Lord help us as your people to realize that we don't need to compromise to be fitting or to disagree with people when we don't agree with their lifestyle irrespective of the persecution the afflictions because we see in the life of Paul that he was so committed even to death and Lord you call us to serve out of our comfort zone so Lord I pray that you help us to be committed even to death keep us humble, keep us focused help us to steer the course in Jesus name, Amen, Amen.